One of the things which makes Uncle Femi's smoked fish so good is the removal of the bitter gallbladder sac. Without removing this organ, it would burst in the heat and make most of the fish very bitter. This is interesting to me because when I buy smoked fish from the market, I normally, you know, see all the guts are sort of still in there and it's uh, something that you've got to clean once they're smoked. Why do you take the guts out? They, they remove the guts so that it will, uh, it will, it will not burn, it will, because when it burns, after when we are smoking, it, um, it dissolves and that affects the taste of the fish. When you say someone is full of bile, that means they're full of nastiness. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. So it's not how big the fish is. Yes. Can you imagine? Look at that. Little fish, big bile. Yes. So the fish are going into this vat here where they're rinsed, and then they're going into the next stage where they're folded sort of ass about face, if I can use that term and a stick put through uh, their head and tail to keep them in that shape, that round shape. That's what's going on here. And it is those grids um, that will slide into the oven. Am I right? Yes. For the next 36 hours. I would ask to help, but I won't. You don't <laughs> this is, for me, this is even uh, the worst part of the whole process pulling out and, the guts. And that is the most important part it is. that determines the taste of the fish. That's right. Now that the fish have been gutted, they're twisted tail to mouth, skewered, and placed in orderly rows on the smoking racks, ready for the oven. The fish are loaded into a large kiln-like oven and sealed up. Hardwood, more charcoal and wood shavings are added and given a good fanning. Now it's time to let the process happen. I see you've got this beautiful um, aged smoker. Uncle Femi is using an industrial wood-fired kiln for his smoking operation, where heat and smoke comes from the base and is distributed around the fish. However, this is just one type of oven, of which there are many. Outdoor varieties and indoor. So even you and I can achieve this on a smaller scale. Look at these beautiful fish hanging. I'm totally inspired. Most people think that what have you added to it? Nothing. But it's the natural aroma from the wood. It God's, got created. God seasoning. God seasoning. Thank you, God seasoning. The best. Yes. I like that. And do you have to put more charcoal in and during the process or oh, what yeah. you have here is going to be enough? It's not, no. You have to keep we on stoking it. Spend, we normally spend, use about one and a half bags of charcoal wow. for a, a process. That is why we want to do it. We try to do as much as possible into our novel. It's going to cause the same uh, amount of charcoal. Right. So all those but for, the, for the purpose we are doing today, <clears throat> we are not filling the, the oven. Right. Uh, just for your... The advantage you take it, you take a lot of time Thank to you. do the one that we're going to feed. Sure, yeah. sure. There's some other smoking going on here too behind us. Oh, that's the, that's the incinerator. We've uh -huh. had this incinerator as, as far back as this house was built. I like this that. is where we burn everything, any waste in, the, in this house. We do not throw any waste outside this compound. And, and it's not a big fire, it's just a gentle. Bunny. Sure. This is a very green uh, concept and what we all need to really be doing instead of throwing things, you know, carelessly into the environment. So I really like seeing this going on here. And, and, and the advantage compost. of this is that the hashes that uh, you, you pack at the end of the day, you use it as manure. 
or compo or compost, compost. To, for your flowers, for anything in your compound. Or That's where. why you've got so many amazing things growing so well in this compound. All the year round. I love to see recycling and Uncle Femi's green approach is really heartwarming indeed. We were unaware that there was a special treat in store for us. Freshly caught catfish in traditional pepper soup. There's no hard and fast rule when it comes to crafting your own pepper soup recipe. And I, for one, don't like following a rule book when I cook. It's usually about creativity. Of course, there are some base ingredients like pepper, onion, garlic, ginger, lemongrass, and even basil, which I have growing in my garden. Then there are local African spices, such as calabash nutmeg with a shell and seed, grains of selim inside a spider-like fingerling, African black pepper with its incredible medicinal power used for the treatment of a range of health issues, fruits of the Aden tree, sweet and vitamin enriched with an appetite inducing property. All these beautiful spices are typically ground into a fine powder before they're used. And whatever you choose, it all spells delicious to me. Now let's go and see what Uncle Femi's going to do with his catfish. We watched Uncle Femi put on a pot of water to heat. He added some secret spices of his own, stock cubes, special pepper soup spices given to him by his cousin in the village, a generous spoonful of dry pepper and an even more generous pinch of salt. Then the fresh catfish. Now back to that simmering pot of pepper soup. My tummy's just rumbling at the thought of it. At last, an addition of some scent leaves from the garden. And it's tasting time. You can see from my expression that words can't even express how good this is. This is clearly an example of fish farm to plate. Just awesome. But while I was eating, Uncle Femi was on double duty, checking his product. See the beautiful golden color the fish are taking on? As the smoke starts a sweet caramelization and concentration of flavor. That's what makes this product so special. And finally, a look at this lovely transformed smoked fish. Uncle Femi is a visionary and a pioneer because he's setting examples on every professional level. He's actually known as Captain Adegoke, a qualified pilot with many years of experience and also fondly known as the thief of Oja village in the critically acclaimed Village Headmaster television series. I remember watching that. This food journey was really a memorable one from start to finish. Next time on Food Journey, it's out with Mother Nature exploring two types of farms. See you there!